that was a really good video. Uh, I really liked how you expose the inaccuracies of the uh, parallels that the filmmaker tried to show between horse and Jesus. Um, I've been wanting to make a response to the zeitgeist for a while now. Um, and I thought it was appropriate to um, post a response to your video because I believe it offers some pretty good things um, in response to the zeitgeist. So uh, maybe some of your viewers will, will be interested in, in what I have to say about it as well. Um, you know, two years ago I was in a philosophy class and uh, some kid came up to the professor and I heard him talking and he said he started to become quite dubious of his uh, Christian faith because uh, of propaganda like this. In fact, I, I think he actually uh, saw the zeitgeist and that's, that's what it was. So um, I'm just going to reiterate some of the things that uh, Rev Dionysus has, has said. So as, as Rev Dionysus has noted, let me fix my camera. Uh, as Rev Dionysus has noted, there are some similarities between Jesus and some of the pagan gods. However, the filmmaker is trying to cite host of parallels that make it seem as if Jesus' story was essentially that of the mythical gods. And since we consider the latter stories false, then we should just toss the Jesus story into the same bucket of fairy tales as well. I mean, there is one huge problem with this. We'll get to that in a second, but first, uh, let's note some of the that some of the facts are not presented here and uh, the similarities as um, as Rev Dionysus has pointed out are not as clear as the filmmaker would like us to believe Horus again was not born of a virgin moreover there is no biblical or Christian claim that says Jesus was born on December 25th that is just the day we, we celebrate his birth uh, but let us assume that Horus was said to be born of a virgin on December 25th as well as Jesus. Should we therefore conclude that the Jesus story is false like Horus's story? Ought we posit that Jesus is a fictitious person because of other myths that have a few, uh, because other myths have a few arguably similar characteristics as Jesus? I mean, what does the evidence of past myths have to do with whether or not Jesus is a historical person? Absolutely nothing. These mythical gods and fictitious stories from the past are unrelated to the issue of whether or not Jesus is an actual person and the Jesus story is true. And this is why the reasoning is so faulty. You see, the filmmaker is attempting to show how the Jesus story came to be false without showing first that the Jesus story is indeed false. Notice when I make this statement, here's why the man lied, I am presuming something else. Namely, that he lied. This should be obvious. Now, this is the same fallacy rooted in the film's ignorant assumption. You know, I can I can say that, uh, I can try to show why the man lied, but, but first I'm, I must establish that he, that he did lie. And I can't just jump to the, the conclusion that he did lie and then try to show it, attempt to show that. I must provide reasons, or, or good reasons, and uh, show that he did lie. Um, and this is, the same, this is the same fallacy rooted in the film's ignorant assumption. It's circular reasoning. It's, it, it's assuming the very thing that it's trying to prove. And uh, the circular reasoning is the foundation of, of its premise. Further, the existence of fakes does not undermine the possibility that the real person or thing actually exists. Gregory Kokel uh, brought up an excellent point in, in one of his blogs or letters on, on his website. And uh, he, ta he talked about a book. He mentioned a book that was written around the turn of the last century. In fact, in uh, 1898... Author Morgan Robertson wrote a fiction novel called The Titan. It was about the Titan, a so-called unsinkable ship that hit an iceberg in the middle of the North Atlantic on a cold April night, and it sank. Now, 14 years later, as we all know, the Titanic sank on its, on its voyage after hitting an iceberg. Now, if you read the story of the Titan and then heard the story of the Titanic, would you meet, immediately dismiss it because of the similar fictitious story that was written before it? Of course not. Why? Because it would be foolish. I mean, whether or not the Titanic sank is determined by the evidence for its sinking, unrelated to uh, any other fictional stories that were like it. And similarly, the Jesus story, described by primary source documents, historical documents we know as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, stand on their merit alone. The story of Jesus stands or falls on the strength of the historical evidence. 
Now, if the Jesus story is false, then it's interesting to ask where the story came from, if it's not established by history. But you can only do that work when explaining how the fiction came to be. You can only explain how the fiction came to be after you can show by separate evidence that the story is false to begin with. And this is the biggest problem with the filmmaker's claim. It is based on faulty reasoning. It's inadequate. It's an inadequate attack on on the Jesus story, and it provides no epistemological foundation. It cites no historical facts, um, and it does not undermine whether or not Jesus is who he claimed to be, or it doesn't undermine the fact that Jesus actually did exist. The premise is founded upon a fallacy. And it's circular reasoning, and that is why I find the zeitgeist to be an inadequate and not very good attack on Jesus and his story.